Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah! Welcome back to Bible Read Along. Maybe welcome for the very first time. We are so glad you're here. What do we do at Bible Read Along? We take one chapter of scripture. We read through it, try to understand context and application. We will highlight recovery, leadership, church principles. And today we are looking at Acts chapter 15. I think I did 20 there, but you get it. Acts chapter 15. Grab a Bible. Grab a pen, grab a highlighter, read along with us. And if you like what we are doing, hit that share button. I'm actually just sharing it out to a bunch of my groups right now that I am involved with. Share it to your personal page. Share it to your groups. This is also available on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, podcasts. And then um, we have a TikTok channel as well where we do short little quick videos, content exclusive to TikTok. Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled content um, that will encourage you. We pray for others. We share Bible verses. We It's just quick. It's fun. Um, go check out our TikTok. If you have a TikTok, all of the links are available wherever you're watching or listening to this. My name is Daniel. I absolutely love Jesus, and he loves me. He's changed my life. I'm here with my wife, Ashley. Jesus has changed her life, too. And we're here with our cat, Rosie, and I wish Jesus would change Rosie. So, um, <laughs> that's, she is actually a really good cat. She is a very good cat. Yeah, okay, so I gave her a bowl of treats yesterday. I don't feed the cat. That's <laughs> Ashley's thing. Um, I just kind of leave the cat alone, let Ashley take care of the cat. So... Um, think what you will judge me if you will. That's just oh, my personality. So then Ashley wakes up the other morning and I was up before her for a change, which doesn't hardly happen. Usually when we get up, the first thing Ashley does is give Rosie a couple treats and then make sure which her, are in a jar. which are in a jar. And, but I didn't know that. So anyways, I wake up and the cat's meowing for meow, meow, meow. I know she wants her treats. Um, but I don't know where the treats are. But I see her food bowl's empty. So I grab the jar of food and I just dump it in there and fill the bowl up. And then later Ashley's like, did you give Rosie her treats this morning? I'm like, no, but I fed her. She's like, what'd you feed her? I'm like, this bowl of food. Those are all her treats. It's like <laughs> catnip and I like just loaded up the, I like loaded up the bowl. Um, so there's our cat story for the day. <coughs> Hey, we have uh, the Acts of Prayer course coming up, and I'm going to tell you, I'm super excited about this. I'm putting a lot of time and energy into this. Every spare moment, hour that I have right now is going into developing this course. It's been weeks and months of studying, preparation, all of these. So Ashley actually watched a 15-minute section of the course yesterday, and mind blown <laughs> that's what i said that is what she said we'll share her video with bible read along maybe later um but what what did you think you saw 15 minutes what were your what did you think i thought it was great she thinks it's great she learned things she had never heard before saw scripture in ways she had never seen it before would you encourage people to sign up for the prayer course that's why i made a video she made a video. We'll share it out. You didn't share it to Bible Read Along. Just personal page, right? I think it's personal page. Okay. Sign up. The registration is in the pinned comment. I know some of you already have. Thank you, Mercury. Thank you, Valentina. <coughs> but if you are watching this, hearing this, there is a prayer course. You can also sign up at BibleReadAlong.com. This prayer course will encourage you. It will build you up and it will teach you a system of prayer that is probably going to just take you to the next level. So I encourage you, go check it out. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, put in the comments. We want to hear from you, see from you too. And um, I think that's about it. 
We'll go to the comments at the end here. I got to pull up the scripture. So we'll go to the comments at the end. Um, again, please share this out. We just want to keep growing and going. And if you follow YouTube, if you have a YouTube, if you watch videos on YouTube and you have a YouTube account, which is really just a Google email, if you have signed in to YouTube, please go follow our YouTube channel. Um, we need about 30 more people there and then we can actually switch the um, web address to actually say Bible read along so that people can find our YouTube a lot easier. If you have TikTok, even if you've never used it, you don't go on it, <laughs> go on for three minutes. Just follow, subscribe, follow. What do you do on TikTok? Follow. follow. Go follow us on TikTok. Um, when we reach a thousand people on TikTok, we can go live and then we can present this program live on there as well. So help us out with that. <clears throat> Okay, let's pray. I'm going to try and get through this without coughing. Um, but let's pray and then get in the word. And again, if you want to share this out, please share it to, to other groups. We'd love to just see more people connect. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, Savior of my soul, we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your death and resurrection. Thank you for the the birth of the early church and the leaders we get to learn from like Peter and John and Paul now. Lord, change us today. Open our eyes and our ears and our minds and our hearts to your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. If you're ready, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Say, put in the chat today. What are we putting in the chat today? <laughs> Ashley says I'm tired. <laughs> Should we put that in the chat? If you're tired, put in the chat. I'm tired. Um, no, but we were up late. Yeah. If you are ready for the chat, though, put I'm ready today. We'll just go with our traditional put I'm ready and let's go to the word of God. I'm going to have to stop sharing this out to the thousands of groups I'm a part of. Sometimes I find sharing, it's like, yay, and then people come and look, and then sometimes we don't get anyone. So it's, I never understand what Facebook is doing, but I'm going to share a couple more. Do, 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 Christian Facebook, Holy Bible, Jesus Answers Prayer, okay, Christian Single, whatever. Anything else? Sure, a few more. Why not? Oh, that'll be rejected there. My bad. Um, okay, let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Acts chapter 15. The council at Jerusalem. Because what's happening? Paul did his missionary trip. People tried to kill him. Um, they are against him. They came back to Tarsus. They, they gave report of this trip. Now let's jump in here. Certain people come down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers. Unless you are circumcised. Now remember Antioch. Why is Antioch keep getting mentioned? Why is it so important? Because it's the actual first place they were called Christians. It is one of the first churches that was established outside of the Jewish, you know, synagogues. Um, so anyways, this is, they're really focused because this is the first one. And so everyone has their thoughts on how this should be and how it should go. So they came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised. According to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. Christians shouldn't be in disputes. Christians shouldn't debate. Well, Paul did. Barnabas did. Just saying. Um, Paul and Bar Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and the elders about this question. Love this because it doesn't just rest on Paul and Barnabas. 
well, they should be circumcised if they really are following the Lord. And Paul and Barnabas are like, no, because they weren't circumcised when they met the Lord. And so there's this argument going on. And what do they do? They go to seek godly counsel. They go up to um, they go up to the council. They go back to Jerusalem to hear from Peter, John, some of the other apostles and the elders. They get wisdom. Um, this, this also shows good system structure. They have people over them that they report to. They gave report of their missionary journey. They have people over them that when something is difficult, they go to, they get understanding wisdom when they don't know an answer. We need these kind of people in recovery. We call them a sponsor in the world today. They might be called a life coach or a mentor, uh, but we need these people. We need these people. All right. Paul Barnabas appointed along with some of the other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and the elders about this question. Verse 3, the church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church not just the people, but the system and the structure, and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. So now we get into it. Yay, it's good to see you. We love you. Okay. We believe, and there's this group that believes this, that belonged to the party of Pharisees. Now, it's hard to understand this because they also said they were believers. So have they have are these Pharisees that have turned to the Lord? Maybe. Um, yeah, anyways, let's keep going here. They must follow, they must be circumcised and follow the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God who knows the heart showed that he accepted them by the Holy Spirit to them, by giving the Holy Spirit to them. Now, what does this, how do we know a few things here? God who knows the heart gave them the Holy Spirit, which means what do we need to be saved? Well, our heart needs to believe in who Jesus is. God who knows the heart showed that they had received, they believed in Jesus as the son of God, and they are committing their life to follow him. Showed that he accepted them by giving them the Holy Spirit to him, to them, just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. This is salvation. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to carry? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved just as they are. We're saved, they're saved, you're saved, everyone's saved by faith, by grace, through, with our faith in Jesus, through the grace of Jesus, okay? The whole assembly became silent, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. When they finished, James spoke up. Brothers, he said, listen to me. Simon, little context note here, um, a variant of Peter. So they're talking about Peter. Um, interesting. These little context tabs, by the way, are footnotes. That means at the bottom of your page in your Bible is more information to give you accurate understanding of what is going on. Now, why is that so important? Because even in the last few days, I have come across videos and arguments. Well, look at this version. 
versus this version and this one version it removed a verse from the bible so they must not even be christians this is deception don't ever listen to this type of bible or this type of bible and it's like are you kidding right now literally right at the bottom where your finger is where you're saying this scripture was removed it's written in the footnotes and says this was not found in some earlier manuscripts, but was found in some later ones. So some versions include it and some do not. Understanding. This doesn't like, yeah, I'm going to, I could go off because there's so many King James only. <laughs> there's a lot of issues with the King James Bible too. NIV only. There are issues with the NIV Bible. The one that we are reading right now. This version only, that version only. You know what I actually think we need? I think we need multiple versions and you need to learn to study from different ones and see the differences. That's why at Bible Read Along, yes, we are reading the NIV version, but you are welcome to read any translation or version that you want and compare it. And I encourage people, go compare scripture later. Go begin to learn these differences, read the footnotes, see why these happened. It actually takes your Bible reading to a new level. Simon, who's Peter described to us, verse 14, how God first intervened to choose a people for his name from the Gentiles. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this as it is written. After this, I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent in its ruins I will rebuild and I will restore it that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, the rest of mankind. Why would God rebuild David's tent, the place of worship? Because all of mankind needs it. Even all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things? Footnote. <coughs> That's found in Amos 9. Who does these things? Things known from long ago. Footnote. Context button. Some manuscripts include some manuscripts, things. 18. The Lord works. The Lord's work is known to him from long ago. So it just words it a little different. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for Gentiles who are turning to God. This is such a powerful verse, not only for Gentiles, but new Christians. Don't make it difficult for people that are turning to God. Oh, well, if you're turning to God, now you have to do this and do that and follow this and you need to read this and you should buy this and you should get rid of all of that and do. Let God work on people's hearts. We just present the gospel and walk with them then through that process. That's the whole point of Celebrate Recovery. Don't make it difficult for people to turn to God. Instead, we should write to them telling them to, so here's what they did, they did kind of come to an agreement on, abstain from food polluted by idols. This was a big deal, especially at this time. You have to remember context here. They are reaching the Greek people where there's all sorts of different gods. Remember, Paul and Barnabas were just called last chapter Hermes and Zeus, the Greek gods. So they're in a Greek culture that all that they know is Greek gods and the way they would offer sacrifices and then they would serve dinner. And so they're saying, don't eat food if it's been offered to idols. Abstain from sexual immorality. Good command. From meat of strangled animals and from blood. Now, again, why is this important? Does this mean we shouldn't eat our steak rare? No, this was a different time, a different place. And if they, if they, good thing, Ashley say, cause she likes raw steak, not raw. Well, blue what rare. blue rare? Are you a blue rare girl? Blue rare. Um, you know, but this is, again, they did not have, the same preservation of meat and food that we have today, refrigeration, freezing, these kind of things. They did not have um, some of the, the health standards that you would find today. And so why are they saying this? Because it was making people sick even unto death. So don't, don't eat food that's offered to idols. Don't 
engage in sexual immorality, don't eat meat strangled and in blood. For the law of Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest time and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. The council's letter to the Gentile believers. So they agreed on this. Let's send a letter. Then the apostles, elders with the whole church decide to choose some of their own men and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas, called Barsabas, and Silas, men who were leaders among the believers. With them, they sent the following letter. Interesting here, a system, a structure, again, a council. They have a letter. They're going to actually officially give a statement to this is not just churches wherever you want to meet and you just get together. And that's not, there is, there is system and structure to church that is in this. With them, they sent the following letter. The apostles and elders, your brothers, to the Gentile believers in, in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Greetings. We have heard that some went out from us without our authorization. Weird. This sounds like hierarchy system structure. And disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we all agreed. Wow, this sounds like an organization board meeting council. Okay. We all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul. Men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Paul has already been stoned to death. Therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we are writing. So we're sending you a letter. We're sending people to, that you know, Paul and Barnabas, to talk about it. And we are sending Judas and Silas as a witness of what Paul and Barnabas are saying and what the letter says. We are covering all our bases here. We want you to know the truth. You do not have to be circumcised to follow Jesus. Therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas confirmed by word of mouth what we are writing. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols. From blood from meat strangled by animals, and from sexual immorality. Which, by the way, in, mer in, in biblical terms, if you want to study that word sexual immorality, it literally will mean any type of sexual activity outside of marriage. Okay? Um, you will do well to avoid these things. Farewell. <laughs> so that's, this is their letter. Literally just exactly what they said. The council... So the men were sent off and went down to Antioch where they gathered the church together. How are we doing for time? They gathered the church where? Together in one place, all like for a service. And they delivered the letter. What? They read a letter in front of everyone that came from the people that oversee the church. The people read it and they were glad for its encouraging message. Judas and Silas, who, they, that, who themselves were prophets... Judas and Silas are prophets. Now we know about Paul and Silas. He actually hangs out with Paul later and they go travel and preach too. Um, but he's a prophet. Judas and Silas were themselves prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the believers. There's so many verses on prophecy. There's so many, oh man, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook prophets I see their videos. I see their posts. What is one of the goals of a prophet? Um, to encourage and strengthen believers. And there's other verses that will back this up. The prophet, the New Testament prophet, is there is an office of a prophet, which means God has appointed you to that title. Then there are people that work in a prophetic gifting, which could still be called prophets. Um, I would say these people are more in a prophetic gifting. They encourage, they strengthen. This isn't repent. This isn't going to Kings and saying you lying snake dog face pony soldier. This isn't lying that, you know, the prophet is not a doomsday prophet. It's to encourage and strengthen. So if you receive a word from a prophetic person and it doesn't encourage you or strengthen you, Weigh it and test it. If it doesn't line up with scripture, 
weigh it and test it. Bring it to two or three other people. There are whole lessons and rules on prophecy in the Bible. After spending some time there, they were sent off by the believers with the blessing of peace to return to those who had sent them. Context note, some manuscripts in here include, but Paul and Silas decided to remain there. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch where they and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord. How much longer? We only got a little paragraph. Disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. What? Leaders <laughs> disagreeing? What? <laughs> okay. Sometime later, you actually find if you follow Paul and his connection with all of these people, he actually has a lot of disagreements and even decides to part ways with a lot of people. Um, sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all of the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, John Mark, with them. But Paul didn't think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. So what is going on here? Paul and Barnabas, who love each other, are in agreement. Let's go to every every place we've ever preached. And Barnabas says, hey, Barnabas, what is his... <coughs> Barnabas, whose name means son of encouragement. Barnabas is good at bringing in people that, like Paul who was Saul, he's really good at bringing in the, the weird fringe outside people and helping build them up until they are leaders. That's what he's trying to do with John Mark here. Let's take John Mark with us. And Paul goes, no. Remember our last trip? He just left with no notice. He didn't come help. He didn't do his work. Um, he, you know, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's going to slow us down. No, they agreed. They, they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas. So we, he was left there and left. Commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches strengthening them, building them up, encouraging them, prophetic. That's it for today. That is Acts chapter 15. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. We would love to hear from you. And um, yeah, let's go over to those comments right now. If this so will... No, so prophetic, and that's where sometimes we get confused. Ashley just said, isn't prophetic like fortune telling? There is gifts within prophecy. There are gifts of, um, how come I can't get this working here? Facebook. Um, within prophecy, there is different, there's, there's words of knowledge. Now, what does that mean? That means you would know something that only God knows without anyone else telling you. God tells you something about someone. And there's, there's still prophecy that functions in that way. There's someone here that this morning you prayed this specific thing. No one would know it except you and God. And now God told me so that you can know he's good and I can pray and be encouraged. Um, other forms of prophecy are for encourage, edification, building up, stirring up, these kind of things. Now, there is also a type of prophetic that can see future events. This is what most of the prophets of the Old Testament did. A famine's coming. If you don't repent, the you know, there's these kind of prophetic words. Um, we don't see that a whole lot in the, uh, the New Testament. Now, do I believe in that? Yes. Do I believe that's part of the gift of God? Yes. I think we have to be very careful with... Let me say it this way. I think sometimes prophetic people will just go... God said, and so then you're just supposed to listen and obey and, and think nothing of it, not question it. 
Instead, that's not what the Bible says about prophecy. It says in the presence of two or three witnesses, and it says to weigh it and test it against the the word of God. It says to measure it and, and, you know, make sure there's some systems in place to make sure that it's not just God said and you got to obey. No, this is, I feel the Lord is telling me these things. You now take it, you weigh it with other people, you weigh it against the word of God, and then you decide how to walk it out. Prophecy is to confirm things, not to give direction. You're going to marry this person and you're going to... That's, that's weird prophecy. Be careful of that. Like, what really watch out for that stuff. Because um, biblically, that's just not, not accurate. Okay comments again thank you everyone for joining us we're available facebook youtube um, podcast tiktok has content as well and we have the prayer course coming up sign up for that online or in person it's going to be amazing um mike's here from pinoca welcome valentina trish mercury jean paul so glad you are here um uh, matthew from Kelowna. it's good um <laughs> mercury it means you shouldn't meet eat at all be kind go vegan <laughs> um well i think that that would disagree with peter's other vision of the the tarp coming down with all kinds of animals and god said rise kill and eat so i don't think can afford meat nowadays anyway yeah who can afford meat um yeah i i, I love that mercury that's funny um me and mercury we poke at each other a little bit regarding meat sometimes. Um, yeah, I, I think vegan is a choice. If you want to eat meat is a choice. The biggest thing for that time, that place was idols and blood. Now, we also have to understand with blood too. There was some things with blood and sacrifices and they would mix things with blood and they actually mixed blood in their wine and there was all sorts of weird stuff going on at that time. So, you know, God saying abstain from blood and sexual immorality, which I think we can all agree with. Good morning, Tessa. Glad you're here. I hope you're feeling better. We've been praying for you. It bothers me when the Bible talks about circumcision. I know someone who is married to an uncircumcised man. She mentions it a lot. Is this really an issue? I don't even like talking about it. No, it's not an issue at all. In fact, that's the whole point of this is, yeah, you don't have to be circumcised. Now, why did God even command circumcision? We can look back with the knowledge we have today, the understanding we have today, and it paints a little different picture. Now, why did he do it? Number one, it was a sign of covenant between the people and God, that they were committed to God. They were separate from the world. Number two, we know now the health reasons. A lot of what God told Israel to obey in the Old Testament was actually for health and safety reasons so that they would not die. Um circumcision can be cleaner it can help avoid infection it can help avoid some of these things but uncircumcision doesn't mean you're unclean or going to get infection either um it and, and if this is too graphic for people i'm sorry it just means that you have to men you have to clean yourself in a different way than men who are not circumcised that's all it means um and god actually wrote paul in this letter, we see, nope, sir, you don't need to be circumcised. Paul, in many of his letters, and Peter too, talk about the circumcision of the heart. What? So circumcision now has absolutely zero to do with faith or religion. Zero. Circumcision is a personal choice based on hygiene and preference. And it, now we are circumcised of the heart, meaning God cuts away the old dead flesh from our heart so that we live pure and clean before him. I hope that makes sense. Um, that's my stance on circumcision. You can look into it more too, but um, John Paul, you guys are so faithful. Well, thank you. That's, that's what we do. You just show up, give the word, show up, give the word. Um, I'm so glad his mercies are new each morning, every morning. Amen. My whole family eat meat eats meat mercury says i asked them on easter do i ever meat shame you they all said no i don't think you meat shame people and i hope you don't feel i'm not shaming you either if you choose vegan lifestyle go for it 
I got nothing against it. That's it for today, guys. Thank you. God bless. And we will be back tomorrow with Acts chapter 16, a great chapter I love. Bye for now. Bible Read Along. Committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com